Hi everyone. Okay, we're going to take a look at chapter 4, and it's titled His Invention Factory. In the mid-1800s, a man in France and a man in Massachusetts both came up with ways to record sound. But as a pattern on paper, much the way the dots and dashes of Morse code looked on paper. Nobody had figured out how to record sounds and play them back so they could be heard again. Now let's just think about that for a second. Right now, I am making a video for you guys. You guys are able to see me, and you are able to hear me, right? What they are doing is just trying to figure out how to make sound be able to be saved and recorded so someone can listen to it again later. What he's trying to do right now leads way for everything else that we have today. It's very, very cool, guys, because we didn't have stuff like this way back when. Let's read a little bit more about it and see what we can learn. Let's see. That's what Tom wanted to do. He had an idea, but he didn't know if it would work. He had drawn some rough sketches, but that was all. For eight months, Tom and his team kept working on his idea for a phonograph. They were working on other inventions, too. They were not in a big hurry, but then an article appeared in the important magazine. Oh, in an important, in important magazine. Scientific America. It said that Thomas Edison had invented an amazing machine. It played the human voice. A wonderful invention, they announced with great fanfare. Tom knew that everyone would be asking to hear his amazing phonograph. Now Tom was in a big hurry. Had someone in Menlo Park told a reporter about what Tom was working on? Maybe. Tom didn't mind. Maybe he even knew who had told the magazine about the phonograph. He liked pu publicity, but now he had to make his phonograph and soon. So he hadn't even made it yet, and someone said that he did. What? It was November 1877. Tom sat down and did another rough sketch. He gave it to his best uh, machinist, mechanist, mechanist, Me mechanist, I think that's the way to say it. Anyone else might look at the drawing and wonder how, how to follow it but his me mechanist was used to Tom's sketches. A week later, he came back with a model. Okay, so let's look at Tom's sketch. Right there. Now, let's say I'm giving you this sketch and I want you to find a way to build it. Go. What are you guys gonna build it out of? Any ideas? None? Maybe some of you have some ideas. That's pretty cool. The model had a long screw with a handle on one end. The screw ran through the middle of the metal cylinder wrapped in tinfoil. On either side of the cylinder was a metal disc with a pin and a short hollow tube. Tom leaned towards the machine, turned the handle, and spoke into one of the tubes as the cylinder moved along the screw. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was as white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. The sound of Tom's voice made the metal disc with the pin vibrate and scratch a sound pattern on the tinfoil. When he stopped speaking, Tom pulled the pin away from the cylinder. He turned the handle in the opposite direction and moved the cylinder back to where it had been. He put the pin on the other side against the cylinder. So let's take a look at some pictures to figure out what is he doing. What are they talking about? So right there, there's a tube right there. We can see that he is talking into it. So kind of like... Think about the computer. I'm talking into the computer, and what it is doing is this machine, when you rotate it, 
it is putting little lines to record what you're saying. Okay. Now, to record, it says right here, let's look at the picture. To record sound, sound enters the horn, vibrates a diaphragm with a needle that causes indentations or little marks on a turning cylinder covered with tinfoil. So it makes those little lines. To play back the invention on the cylinder, you need the needle and the diaphragm on the opposite side. So you kind of put the dots on one side of it and then you have to turn it over to read what the dot said on the other side. Now is the big moment. Tom turned the handle again. The cylinder moved along the screw and out came his voice speaking the lines of the familiar nursery rhyme. Tom was almost as surprised as everyone else. He could hardly believe that his phonograph worked the very first time. Tom went to the offices of Scientific America to play his wonderful phonograph. The excited editors crowded around. Wow, they had never seen or heard anything like it. In April 1878, Tom traveled to Washington, D.C., where he spoke to a National Academy of Sciences about his invention. He also had his, his photograph taken by Matthew Bradley, or Brady, the famous Civil War photographer. Let's learn a little bit about Matthew Brady. Look at that dude. I like his beard. It's kind of pointy. Matthew Brady studied photography in New York City under Samuel Morse, the inventor of the telegraph. He photographed lots of famous Americans, including Abraham Lincoln. He took one picture right before Lincoln became president. It took Brady about 15 seconds to take the photograph. Lincoln had to wear a clamp to hold his head perfectly still, otherwise the photo would look blurry. During the Civil War, Brady was the first photographer to take pictures of battlefields. After a long day of meetings and receptions, President Rutherford B. Hayes asked Tom to come to the White House. It was 11 o'clock at night by the time he got there. The President was so impressed with Tom's phonograph that he made Mrs. Hayes get out of bed to hear it. At first, Tom thought companies would use the phonograph in business. He saw it as a kind of di dictation machine for writing letters. Businesses did use it. It was called the Ediphone. But during his lifetime, Tom saw his phonograph popularity grow in ways he didn't expect. There was a big demand for music in concert halls and in penny arcades. For five cents, several people could listen to a, a song at the same time. Soon people wanted their own phonographs at home. What kind of music devices do you guys have at home? What kind of music things do you have at home? Imagine if you had to use something like that to listen to, to music. Years later, Tom wrote in an article about all the ways the phonograph might be used one day. He saw far into the future. He even predicted audio tapes. He called them talking books. Tom was always working on more than one idea at a time. Perhaps he didn't pay as close attention to his phonograph as he should have. His company, the Edison Speaking Phonograph Company in New York City, made and sold phonographs using the cylinders, but the other companies went on to develop a more popular machine. It used flat discs called records. Has everyone heard of a record player? Very, very similar. When they're making the records, they have to make those indents. Isn't that cool? Tom was only 30 years old when he invented his phonograph. At that young age, he became known as the Wizard of Menlo Park.
The phonograph may have been Tom's baby and his favorite, but it was the next invention that made him far more famous. Tom was about to work on something that would change the way people live forever. So here is a picture of the phonograph. And next time we are going to be reading about another one of his inventions. Okay? That is it for today. I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.